Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining in. Uh, I'm Vivek and I'm working with uh, Strategenics as an Atlassian specialist and I'll be uh, giving you a small demo and information about how to use Jira forms today alongside my colleague Meg. Hi everyone. I'm Meg Wedding. I'm a consultant and business analyst here at Strategenics. I'm a bit of an Atlassian nerd and I really, really like the automation and that we can get out of form. So excited to take you through that today. Back to okay. you. Thank you, Meg. Okay, so let's get started. So today, this is the agenda for us. Uh, benefits of Jira real-time example use case, how we are using Jira forms and the purpose of forms. So let's get started to the first slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So overview and purpose of Jira form. So this is, uh, we are using Jira forms to capture the important and specific uh, custom information from teams and different agents in GSM. Uh, this form specially tells the users what information to fill in without even having much idea about how to use Jira administrative work or the project specific inlets uh, as the uh, form speaks for itself and it has most of the relevant information which are needed to submit a forms and get uh, your work done on a day-to-day -day basis. It also helps us eliminate too many back and forth, which generally happens if you are having multiple stakeholders and participant in the team. And a forms generally helps in uh, getting things done faster uh, compared to a traditional ticketing system when using without a form. And uh, if you do, uh, obviously, uh, if the turnaround time is less uh, using a form or an automation, then obviously the resolution will be faster and it will help the business on a longer run. Where can we use Jira form? So we use Jira form especially in case of ticketing system on our portal where uh, a form, uh, form uh, works separately compared to a Jira ticket. Uh, you can have your dedicated information available in a form that can be linked to a Jira custom field also. If you want to track it on a reporting purpose, uh, that will come on a later part of the uh, slide or discussion as we get along. Uh, the form can op appear uh, like uh, the intake form. It can appear below the specific Jira fields. Uh, once the ticket is created and you are in an agent view, the form is just below the issue description and it can be kind of differentiated on how, what informations are pulled in from the form compared to the normal Jira ticket. You can also use a form to create a new issue uh, from the uh, agent view also, and also from the uh, customer view, like the uh, end user. So end user can submit a form from the portal as well as uh, agent can create the form. Unique benefits of Jira forms. First and the most uh, important, I would say my favorite is the conditional logic because uh, using conditional logic, you can define the form based on what use case you have. Suppose you are a team, but your requirements are different when it comes to intaking user requests. So in one uh, form itself, you can embed, embed multiple logic based on which the input criteria will change. I mean to say the fields which are available in the form will change based on the input criteria you have selected. It is also user friendly because for each of the form uh, fields, you can define which inputs you are exactly looking for the uh, from the end user. So you will not have to uh, kind of, uh, depend on any peer or any colleague to tell you what are the information that you need to fill in. If you are a new journey or you, you do not know much about the uh, process in the uh, organization or in the team uh, that you are working in. So a simple form can basically take up most of those kind of challenging work for you. And uh, also it 
can support complex workflow process because uh, a form is specifically uh, to uh, can be tied up on a later stage to a workflow using automation also without automation also if you know in the uh, form you can use uh, user pickers also as a approver or as a, or as a reporting manager those kind of stuff so looking at a form in one glance itself it will tell the agent what inputs has been taken from the form maintain workflow and reporting so uh, as we know uh, all the things that are in jira ultimately they lead to a business case where most important thing things are the dashboard and gadgets so the information that we pull in from the form, uh, form that can ultimately link to a specific field in jira or multiple fields in jira and using jql uh, we can create a uh, certain dashboard gadgets that can be really helpful for the people to look at the uh, uh, out, outcomes i mean to say the if it is uh, meeting the objectives of the business or if you are looking for tracking any specific kind of information as as in sls or any targeted date those kind of things that can also be looked in uh, by the form and yeah maintain search reporting organizing and automation and this is uh, almost the same same thing that i have already discussed that uh, using the forms basically you can uh, decide what which information you want to get into uh, jira from the end user and later on filter out those information also based on your use case okay uh, how can form work for you so basically uh, one form can handle multiple kind of conditional logic also multiple kind of request uh, can be handled uh, in one single form that can be tied to multiple input request like uh, a form can be tied up to a hardware uh, re request a separate form can be tied up to a uh, merchandise request so this can be some use case of forms using conditional logic uh, if there are multiple stakeholders in your organization, sometimes it can be very challenging for your uh, Jira admin or project admin to satisfy all their need and uh, provide the customization on the go. Whereas using form, those effort can be reduced significantly because form itself has most of the capabilities built in where you are just few clicks away to provide the end user what they are exactly looking for so for the jira admin it is very easy also for the project admin if they want to customize a form or change something in a form it is very compared very easy as compared to any other uh, features that are available in jira which can also uh, uh, lead to complex changes in the workflow or the custom fields all those kind of stuff okay and next would be the demo so i will just try to get onto the demo right away give me one second okay I hope you guys can see my screen now. And yeah. So this is one of the ITSM project that I'm working with right now. And first I will show you the admin perspective on what are the configuration that I have done on the forms. So here, if you see, there are two forms available in this project one is hr form the other one is inventory request form that is mostly for uh, it team and the hr form is for the onboarding team onboarding or the offboarding team whichever you can think of so oh, this is one of the form that i have created from the scratch there are few fields that i have added also some sections uh, that i will also cover first i'll show you the preview so that you understand what i am going to cover on this one so if you see there's a single form we are dealing with here which has two section 
onboarding and offboarding. So you will not have to kind of give a uh, end user unnecessary information. If a user is onboarding, then they can choose onboarding and they will be able to fill in all these details. If a user is offboarding, the options are changed for it. So these both are coming from the same uh, form. Just the thing is the conditional logic which is provided here that is different. So first I'll uh, add the conditional logic section. If you see here, the condition which is it is selected is conditionally and where the section is chose to onboarding. So every time the onboarding section is selected you'll be able to see all this information and if you scroll down below this section is selected where the conditional logic is uh, selected for offboarding so in, in this similar fashion you can have n number of conditions available here out of those you can pick which section would be available for the end user based on the initial uh, input that they have given at, if you see here, uh, we have custom templates already available uh, that you can import that will come to at the later part of the demo. Right now, when we are building a form from the scratch, if you see here, there are multiple fields available in the form like text field, uh, choice fields, date fields, and numeric field. And one special one is that is uh, user picker, as you know, in Jira, you can uh, select either single user or multiple user. So using this available field option, I have created this form. If you see, this is a radio button because you can only choose one. This is multi-select and the options are available here. You can add in more choice if you want. And if you come here, the default answer also, you can choose what forms uh, what is the input that can be selected uh, if nothing is chosen right now it is not linked to any jira field but if you see there's an option you can pick from any of the jira field on a later stage if you want to uh, tag this department uh, form section to a jira field which is already available that will ultimately come in handy when you are doing reporting uh, using jira's own uh, gadgets or dashboard data connection we are not doing any links over here and uh, what are rest yeah validation we are not providing because if i choose validation then this will be marked mandatory and you will have to fill in that information to continue with the uh, submission of the form minimum number of choice we have not selected so this option that you see on the right hand side for the type of uh, input, it will change. Few of them will be uh, same where you see whether you want to mark it mandatory, link it to Jira field and all. Those will be same. Other than that, uh, it will be uh, mostly the same what you see over here. Uh, no matter whether what kind of fields you are selecting from over here. This is one of the section I'm just using as a information. You, for normal wiki or customized font that you can uh, make use of just to make uh, the UI look more attractive over here. Second one is this one. I have not used any label. So if I use DLC, so it will show here. So this is what I was talking about when we say that we guide the user what information they want to put. So you can provide the information, what information you are looking for the end user to fill in so they know what uh, they should be putting in when they are submitting a form and this is a drop down this is for a kind of date uh, picker and most of the things are same just the thing is this is the uh, checkbox i have tried to make most of the all available fields uh, in the forms to make sure uh, we cover uh, it in one or two forms itself. And the section is nothing but the conditional logic what we are putting in here. Once you put in one section, so suppose we are using HR form for onboarding and offboarding, we can have one more for internship, one more for kind of training. So that way we can have kind of n number of forms and toggle between the forms based on the user input selection. 
ultimately the form will look something like this for a end user when they are submitting a form now coming back to the settings where we will see what what are the administrative part that we need to be aware of when we are creating a form uh, we create the form in the project itself but we can map it to any kind of request if you see uh, from the gsm itself we have the ability to link the same form into multiple multiple request type so right now i have for onboarding new employees i can choose for any of those uh, kind of request new account i'll select for now if i toggle this it will create a new issue in jira itself and if you come here onboarding new employees uh, request new account this should be fine recommended issue i have turned it off because i do not want any recommendation on this one this is the uh, shortcut i would say to the form submission url that you can pass it to any of your teammate via email or shared link and this can also be added in any confluence page if in case you do not want to populate one confluence page with too much overwhelming information you can just put in for any hr request submit a form over here and you can provide this link log uh, log the form so that only project admin can reopen it uh, this is self explanatory i am not locking this form so that anyone can uh, make use of it create an attach a pdf of the issue so if you want to uh, strictly monitor what form was submitted at the earlier stage and do not want to modify it then you can choose the option every time you submit a form a pdf copy of the same form will be attached to the ticket itself if you come to the issue creation part uh, if you toggle this option it uh, keeps the form so that anyone can uh, edit and submit it after it is uh, created ideally it is not suggested because uh, again it will lead to miscommunication on the later stage but there are some use cases where uh, you would want to uh, kind of make use of the lock uh, i am using some validation so i am not uh, using uh, this toggle option to ignore the validation this is what uh, we just saw that if a onboarding employee is there uh, there has to be a mandatory field like a uh, email id or phone number so we would not ideally want to ignore that field so i'll keep it like that and uh, before we move to the end user perspective i'll just uh, show you the other form also back to forms and okay this is one of a, a form that is mostly in the it world itsm i would say for any hardware or software changes that you need on uh, your infrastructure if you are looking for any changes there are multiple uh, what do you do, say uh, approval uh, it has to go through so using a form you can basically as an end user fill in all those details and uh, the ad admin or the agent they are aware of this specific information so based on this they can also read out the request to the specific team whether it's the it team whether it's the finance team they can read out it to the specific or the concerned person for the application to be reviewed so it is a flat form i am not using any conditional logic here you can also put in conditional logic here if it is a hardware request if it is a software request those way uh, this field also can change based on the selection that you have done this is similar to what we just saw on the hr form uh, there we use the onboarding and offboarding request same way using conditional logic you can also change here if you add a section and uh, provide conditional logic for start and end you can also segregate what information you want to show for which kind of selection the user has made and uh, this is basically the same thing what uh, we have already discussed for the settings part on the hr form itself 
so i'll directly jump into the end user perspective where okay i hope everyone can see my mozilla firefox okay i'll just try to okay i'll try to make use of the onboarding new employees so if you see this is the normal jira screen that uh, you see for uh, not jira screen uh, this is the help desk screen that you see for any kind of request so this field will be mapped to the ticket itself if you scroll down a little bit this is the exact uh, form that has been rendered here right now i'll use on board i'll not choose any recruiter i haven't marked it to any of the recruiter or assignee so it's not able to pick any user from there if you want uh, you can map it right now i have marked this as optional so i don't need to map it i'll just pull make it full time on board okay, okay. time to save the planet admin at the rate abc.com phone number one two four five seven eight nine ten okay must be an email address okay validation it is doing validation also if you see so for spaces and if it is not complete email it will validate for yourself so you do not need to worry about that summary okay on um, board request on board request okay i will ignore the typo okay ip8 this is the request that has been created so i will just move on to leave this space okay so if you see here the issue is created for an agent to review right now i'm just making use of the standard workflow over here nothing has been customized or no automation trigger has been used on this form coming back to the form section this is the standard input that we had provided as a end user and if you see i have an option to reopen or download the pdf full form download as excel or i'll not be able to do it because it's not allowed to delete this one for now based on the permission i can reopen the form and edit it because i have the admin privilege on the right hand side if you see uh, the label request participant organization these fields are not used as of now the reason being i haven't used any of the custom field regarding department or the employee type if we want it to be filtered or used uh, in a dashboard or gadget we can always make use of the custom field over here and use the option of uh, mapping the form fields to any of the custom field so on a later stage we can use jql to uh, populate those information in the gadgets or dashboard okay and if i go back waiting for support in progress okay I will go to the user. Okay, so if you see, uh, it is in progress. No changes has been made to the form because I didn't make any 
changes to the form the request type is onboarding that we chose from the uh, setting option for onboarding the similar thing can be done to the other form also if i go back to the portal computer and hardware request a new hardware okay so if you see here this is basically the jira field and the attachment is coming from the jira field itself other than that all this informations are from the form model hp three this is the date picker so this is description where i had marked it mandatory as a text field so uh, it's showing as mandatory this is from the forms not from the jira description or the help desk description this is summary which is marked mandatory for create issue but this is also one of the field that we have marked mandatory okay no no send okay Same. Okay, so this is IP nine. So if I go back to IP nine, this is the form template that have been populated from the help desk ticket itself. And I can obviously start working on this one no automation or validation has been put in i can change it from here itself so the user can see it from here and they can always have a copy of their own as a pdf that this is the request that i have submitted yep that's about it and there there are multiple use cases uh, other than this if you are working on a small firm or if you are working for a retail business online retail business then it is not always uh, kind of uh, possible for you to define what are the your inventory what are the currently available stocks that you have so you can always take request from the end user via the form so there is no validation but still you will be able to get what are the things the end user is looking for or searching for and on a later stage that can be uh, used to kind of uh, uh, change your strategy or your uh, inventory uh, inventory storage also one more thing if you go to project okay i'm in the same project itself from the forms so suppose i have five or ten forms available but i just want to understand which form or which kind of intake request are having uh, what issues in it so you can always export it as an excel and in the excel seed itself you will be able to see what are the issues those are submitted from the forms and who is the assignee who is the recruiter uh, all those information that those are basically provided in the forms configuration okay so that's all about it and now i'll hand over to meg to show us some more use case and also some good stuff around automation and validation that we can do using forms itself. Thank you. Thank you, Babek. I'm just going to share my screen now. Hopefully.
hopefully it's coming your way. Everyone can see it, hopefully. Very quiet today. Uh, so I just wanted to pick up from where the Beck was, um, just in the forms of a service project in here. So you do have some controls over the forms in the project as well. So the Beck did mention that you can export. Um, some of the other great functions that you can use in here is to be able to duplicate forms. So you can duplicate within the project. So if you needed to take a copy of one and update it, um, if you needed to build on that particular form, it's very easy to duplicate here. Um, and one of the other key functions here is being able to copy forms across projects. Uh, that can be really useful because it's really frustrating to have to recreate request types across different service projects. Um, so if you can copy these forms across those um, projects, it makes your life a lot easier in just moving those things across. Um, you can also delete forms, albeit we're always really cautious when it comes to deleting forms. Um, and we always would just say, be careful when you're deleting, but when you do delete, um, it won't take, it won't affect any of your existing issues that are already using the form. Um, so they will have it, but you won't be able to come in here and do any exports of any information related to that particular form. Um, so just something to be mindful of when you're working in here. Um, one of the dependencies on actually publishing a form and having it available on the portal for your customers is to have it related to a request type. So when you come in and build a form, um, you can build it and then in the settings that Bebek was talking about, it's around linking it to a request form. You have to have that request type created, obviously, before you can link it through here. Um, so you do need to just jump into the request type section in your admin settings of the service project and make sure that you've got the request type set up correctly. Depending on what fields you want to show, a bit like what Bebek was showing us earlier with the embedded form below, you can hide most, if not all, of the uh, fields on your request type and just have the request form showing itself um, on the particular request form on the portal. The one exception to this is attachments. Uh, there is some functionality coming soon, we all hope, from uh, the Atlassian team to allow attachments to be part of the form. Currently, you're not able to add them in, um, but you will be in the future. And that's really exciting because you'll be able to add multiple attachments within the form um, and direct your customers to the right area of where they need to be uploading those things or what information you need at each particular point in the form. For the moment, until that function comes through, the attachment field will show at the top. So you'll see here, it's just showing here, and this is separate to the form itself that I'm using in forms. If I jump back into our build here, I did just want to take you through as well that Atlassian have helped us all out and put in quite a few templates in here um, that you're able to leverage. And they're a really good starting point. If you're not quite sure where to start, um, if you're just trying to prototype something with your business users or other people within the um, company, it's a really good way to start building it out because you're not actually using any hard-coded custom fields. You are just popping in some some structure and formatting around the form and being able to load that through. You'll see here there's 329 templates and they relate across multiple different um, business units and areas and you can view them. So if you load one in, whenever I'm presenting it's always slow, uh, you'll see this is one that we were looking at earlier but um, you're able to then review that template as well before you pop it into your form itself. When you're using templates, you can use multiple templates. So you can insert multiple templates, you can edit the fields out. So if it's not needed for your particular project, you can remove it. One tricky little thing um, that you may have come across if you've been using forms as well, if you're using this column view, it's not easy to delete your, your field. And um, so sometimes it's easier to drag it out of that column view and um, then you're able to delete it. I won't delete it because I am using this form, um, but you can just drag it up here and you'll get the delete button down here. The other thing that you can do with your field, um, your fields within here is connect them through to your Jira 
custom fields that you have or linked Jira fields. Um, so whether they're the standard fields that you use on a regular basis or custom fields that you have, you can link through these fields. So while some of these can be just gathering information from your customers that you need, that you may not need to report on into the future, um, that you need for reference, but not really as part of any reporting that you do, um, but you may have other fields that are linked and that are used to trigger automations or different validations in your projects. So this particular one, I am using the request a new JIRA project template and I want to put an approver on that and use the approval workflow. So I'm just going to use the service request with approval workflow and I want someone to come in and approve it. So I've selected this particular field and I can link it to that JIRA field. And that just makes sure that I get the same functionality out of that. And I can also update all of those fields in the ticket. So that being said, um, when I come across into the project, I can fill out as a customer all of my details. This is just your normal um, approver user lookup. So you can add people into the approver field um, and then submit the request. So I've, oh, one, there we go. Um, I've submitted one here. So Alana Hansen has submitted a request for a new project and submitted all the information. You can see that um, she has nominated me as the approver, so I can go through and approve her particular request. As for most items in here, um, if any of your customers can't see it at first, it may be hiding under that show details tab. So really important just to prompt users as well that it might be hiding for them. Um, as Babek mentioned, you can download the PDF from here, but once I've submitted this form, it's actually closed it for the customer to make any changes at this point. Um, and that's really important. If you start to make changes at, at this point, JIRA won't log the changes as you may be used to using in any of the other fields in an issue. Um, so changes to the, the forms themselves won't be logged. Um, it's really reliant on that live data that's in that form at that point in time. When I'm looking at this from the agent point of view, um, this is sitting in my queue now, and I can see that some, some information has been populated in through to the other fields. So because I've linked up the approver field, I can see that it's linked me into that approver role over here. And it's also giving me the ability to approve this request. From here, the agent can view the form um, and they can minimise it. If there's too much information showing on the, on the screen, you can close that down. You can also reopen the form from here. So if there was an edit required to any of the information here, you can reopen that form and then this will allow you to edit as well. Um, so you can edit any of those details and then press submit. Like I mentioned, if you do make changes there, it just won't show it in your work log or history, um, sorry, history at the bottom here. Um, so it will just update the information in that particular issue, in that particular form, sorry. You also have the option as agents to share forms either internally or externally. So some forms or processes, you may want to use the internal um, view to share information. And this means that really you're only working on it from that agent point of view. So it works in the same way as that reply to customer or an internal comment functionality um, and being able to share information there. If say something in your process was that they submitted the form and then it went for internal review, um, you could then make it internal and then it hides it for them as well. And then the last thing that I just wanted to show you around um, what you can do in terms of your automation with forms. So uh, Jira recently made some updates around automation components for forms. Um, and now you can have automation based off the trigger of a form submitted. So uh, that rule will be run when the form, forms attached to an issue are submitted. Um, you can have one around uh, checking to see if forms are attached, so a condition to see if the forms are attached to a particular issue. You can have an action, so um, two actions actually, copying forms um, from another issue to the current issue and attaching forms. 
for this particular one, we've just gone through a request to create a new project in JIRA. And then I've just put in a sample automation here that then looks at the um, projected closure date of that particular project and then creates an issue. So it will create an issue in the project um, and copy certain fields, so the reporter, for example, and then add in a form to the, to the issue, the project closure form, for the project lead to then complete um, and return. So you can start to automate some of those tasks based on the due dates of particular things um, to ensure that all of the actions are being um, addressed when they need to in a timely way. So you can see the project closure activities here has been created off another, another issue that we had in the system. And this would push it to the reporter with the notification. We've automatically made the status move through to waiting for customer. And we've opened up the form for them to then complete that on the customer portal and let us know um, what actions need to happen as part of that project closure process. <clears throat> okay, I uh, guess if you have any questions, anything, and not only forms, anything regarding automation, custom fields, uh, any conditions on the workflows, any use cases that uh, we might have included uh, here that, can, that we can always take note of. Oh, hey, Vivek, uh, Mike, there's a Murthy here. I have a quick question. Uh, first of all, thanks for the uh, good insight and uh, demo on the forms. It's really helpful. Uh, I have one question. So in, in, when it comes to a server or a DC, um, there's a huge dependency on something called as behaviors on the, on, the, on the create screen, right? Where uh, one field value should populate based on the previous field value, right? Which is some, which something which we cannot achieve it in cloud today. So will the forms can be alternative for that? Let's say if I have a, three fields where mm -hmm. one field value uh, should be populated based on the previous field value. Can we achieve that using the forms? Uh, to some extent, but not exactly uh, because uh, the form is only taking input values. Uh, it is not on the go creating a Jira issue itself. It is just taking the input values and running on the Jira uh, create issue screen. But once the form is created, if we can tweak the automation a bit, like uh, if in the Jira form, you have suppose uh, selected a uh, custom field value saying approver. Mm -hmm. Once the approver is selected to suppose Meg, the next uh, workflow condition, it should be uh, in progress and next approver should be assigned to uh, Nadia. Then you, on a later stage, you can use automation. Like uh, every time a transition is done, uh, a transition is done from open to in progress. The assignment so, should be uh, changed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that that is post creation. So what I'm, yes. uh, I, I saw one of your, uh, in one of your demo where you selected uh, onboarding and the respective fields populated, and even you Correct. selected offboarding, <clears throat> another set of fields populated. So in Correct. that way, can we do it for? Each field, let's say I select a field based on that, another field value should get populated. Is that feasible? Uh, that automation is not available uh, out of the box. Uh, we can only choose the condition based on which uh, the uh, field value should change, like the input value will change. You will not be able to provide any values to it as such, but the form's rendering will change. It's not that you are explicitly putting in a value. Suppose you are putting onboarding to offboarding, uh, mm -hmm. then the field values will change. What you can do is you can uh, select any of the pre-existing value. So suppose uh, if you have defined a default answer for any value, suppose uh, you are selecting onboarding uh, for an example, and for onboarding, the default uh, team should be engineering. So if you are choosing that default value as engineering and that engineering is again tagged to a custom field in Jira, that on, then on the go, you can do some customize, uh, automation, but you cannot achieve it directly in the form itself. So somewhere or the other, you have to rely on the automation post creation of the issue. Uh, you cannot do it right away on the form itself. I hope I answer that question. Yeah, I think that that should help. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for that.
Thank you. Thank you. We've just had a, a question in the chat as well around adding insight fields to the forms, like adding an insight object, um, a particular software or hardware selection field to an incident report. Um, and we also have one of our technical team on board in the call as well. So Piyush has answered that for you, Abodas, um, and just said that that's part of the Atlassian roadmap that it's been working on and will, will be available in quarter two, quarter three, 2022. We've also got the uh, poll question results in. So thank you everyone for participating in that. Um, I'll go through the answers to these now. Uh, so the number one question, can you add attachments to a form? It might've been a bit of a tricky question. Uh, we had yes at 64 and no at 36%. Um, you can't add it directly into the form, but you can add attachments to the request type. So that's the workaround at the moment until the new feature comes out um, from Atlassian, which they're talking about at the moment. Number two was if a form is deleted from a project, what will happen? Um, all of you said nothing, no, not all related issues will be deleted. Um, the other options were the form and the values slash data within it will be deleted on any issue the form is associated with. 36% said that one. And deleting a form won't affect any instances of that form already being used on issues. 64 of you said, 64% said that. Um, the later one is correct. So you're deleting the form won't affect any current um, issue data that's on there. You just might be able to access that from the forms view in, in your service project. So you'll still be able to see the form in an issue and see the data, but you won't be able to export um, in the way that you would be familiar with from the actual form. And question number three, if I create a request from the create issue screen in JIRA, will the form be available? Uh, 64 of you said yes, um, and 36% said no. Um, it doesn't typically come from the create issue screen. You can have a URL um, or you can have it as a suggested form within the issue, um, but not directly from the create issue screen. Um, question number four, if you're in the company managed project, the project administrator role can create new custom fields while creating a form. In some of my mind, I think this would be a great idea. Others, not so much, because we'd end up with so many different forms in there. Um, the, the project administrator cannot create new custom fields when creating the form. They can create fields within the form, um, and they have the ability to customise how that looks, but they can't create a JIRA field or a JIRA custom field directly from that particular screen. Um, the custom field would need to be created in JIRA as per the normal process. So 27% of you said that was true and 73% said it was false. Uh, number five, can you use the request participants field on a form? 73% said yes, 27% said no. Um, the way that the request participant field works in JIRA, um, it allow you to link, but it doesn't work that but it doesn't, it's a locked field. Um, so it is expected behavior. You, you can only do it from the portal and it's only with that shared with function. Um, so at the moment, not available. Uh, you need to have a, an additional custom field for that particular function and using the multi-select or user select. And then number six, how many types of fields are available to use in forms? Um, we, put the, we put together some suggestions, so 10, 9% of you said 10, 36% of you, 36 said 15, 20% of you, uh, oh no, 55% of you said 20, and 0% said 25, so the correct answer there is actually 15, so you have the ability to choose from those different types of fields within the form itself. Thank you everyone for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. If you have any feedback for us, please let us know. Um, lovely to see you all and really appreciate you coming along. Well, Daniel, thank you.
Daniel Condon, if you're still there, you've just posted a message. Can a form be posted for external users or just logged in users? Um, so the forms can be posted to your customers on the service portal. Um, so depending on what your setup is for your customers, um, they should be able to, to view the form um, and import data as per your customers normally do as well. Thanks, Daniel. Have a great afternoon or morning, wherever you are. Thanks, mate. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.